It's day five of my Best of the Best in Horror Countdown 2020. This time, it's all about water-themed slashers. Let's get splashy and slashy. Welcome to the official Best of Horror 2019 through 2020 countdown on ML Miller Frights. A part of the Kings of Horror Network, I'm ML Miller. Be sure to give this video a like, share with your buddies across the web, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. If you're in the Chicago area and love horror, you have no excuse not to head out to the Chi-Town Movies Drive-In for the music box of horrors at the drive-in. Every day in October, for 31 Nights of Horror, there will be late shows Sunday through Thursday and double features every Friday and Saturday night. Every weekend is themed Grindhouse Fridays, Rip Off Saturdays, and Sequel Sundays. Tonight they're playing The Host from Parasite director Bon Joon Ho. If you haven't seen this creature feature yet, you're missing out. Look below for a link to the schedule where to get tickets, and directions to this awesome horror event. Coming in at number 27 on the countdown is Lake of Death, also known as Didotis Journey. It was released July 16th, 2020, and it's streaming exclusively on Shudder. Lake of Death was directed and written by Nini Bull Robjem. Lake of Death is a Norwegian throwback slasher film, a group of youngsters return to a family cabin in the woods off the lake in the magical land of Norwegia. This one is more of a traditional style horror, reminiscent of Evil Dead, Friday the 13th, and the obscure 80s gem The Slayer. This is the first time Lillian, played by Eben Ackerley, is returning to the cabin since her twin brother Bjorn, of course his name is Bjorn, played by Patrick Walsh McBride, disappeared into the lake two years ago, and her friends are there to support her on this trip that is supposed to be cathartic for her. While the usual tomfoolery of drugs, drinks, and debauchery occur, Lillian struggles with her own mental state as she keeps hallucinating that a black liquid substance is creeping all over her body, down the walls, in the sinks, and all over the place. When her friends begin disappearing, Lillian believes the lake rumored to be bottomless and the site of much horror in local folklore is out to get them. Lake of Death has a deep love for 80s horror. When a cellar is found in the cabin, they say this is just like the cellar from Evil Dead. When someone is sleepwalking, one of the kids quotes Freddy Krueger. While this might be clunky in an American film, somehow it really does feel like genuine adoration for the horror genre here. Still, there's a lot that makes Lake of Death stand on its own. What makes the film distinctive is that it really walks a tightrope holding back exactly what kind of horror film it is. Lillian experiences all kinds of hallucinations and nightmares, but are these simply visions of a damaged mind or some kind of premonition of supernatural happenings to come? Lake of Death flirts with being a film of supernatural terror from ancient Norwegian folklore, or it might be a slasher film with a human horror stalking the group. The film keeps the answer quiet for an extremely long time, suggesting one or the other, or both, or none at all. While I was itching for an answer, I was having fun getting to know these campers and wondering when and how they will meet their impending demises. One criticism of Lake of Death is that nothing completely horrific happens until the hour mark. There are all kinds of suspicious activities occurring, and strange visions we see through Lillian's eyes, but the group isn't really affected until quite a long way in. This makes for a lot of scenes of people scratching their heads at minor oddities going on, like someone abducting and tying up the dog, someone making a mysterious breakfast for everyone, the opening and closing of doors, along with a few too many scenes of Lillian doubting her own sanity. I never really was looking at my watch during Lake of Death, but the visions and prolonged mystery may be tiresome to some. I also found that the actress playing Lillian, even Ackerley, was overselling the dour and melancholy act. Sure, I understand that she just lost her brother and is dealing with a lot of stress, but if she is this fragile and unstable, she should be getting therapy, not going on a trip with her friends for the weekend. While it seems they might be there to help her through this tough time, 
Most of the film is dedicated to them partying, going off to have sex, and taking notes for a paranormal podcast, while two of the men are making sexual advances towards Lillian, which doesn't seem very sensitive to her. There's not a lot of support going on for Lillian here, which makes the point of them all meeting at her dead brother's house a little pointless. I did have a lot of fun watching these guys party, though, which is summed up with a few quirky and lively scenes involving a bedsheet ghost and some boppin' faux American rock and roll. It wraps in a twisted and tidy manner, reminiscent of 80s slasher and Cabin in the Wood films of yesteryear. There's a pretty solid reveal, and the whole film has some wonderfully startling imagery and scenes of tension and suspense. Another water-sloshed slasher flick of note is Aqua Slash. It was released on June 23rd, 2020, and it's available on digital download and on demand from Blue Fox Entertainment. Aquaslash was directed and written by Renaud Gauthier. Gauthier directed the awesome Disco Path and brings another unconventional and quirky slasher with Aquaslash. Like Disco Path, this is a gory film, but also retains a sense of morbid humor and has another worldly feel to it that makes everything both familiar and alien at the same time. The graduates of a local high school get together at a water park for an 80s retro party to do the usual. Party hardy, do drugs, have sexy times. What they don't know is that there's a serial killer stalking the grounds, tampering with the rides, and slashing the students to ribbons. Aquaslash is an odd film, and I can see why some might downright loathe it, as there is a sort of inner logic going on that is slightly off-kilter. It's almost as if Gauthier is honoring those raunchy beach comedies of the 80s, with plenty of cheating, philandering, canoodling, nudity, and drugs being the central focus. Everything plays out without a lot of explanation, so the film forces you to put the relational pieces together yourself. I like this trust in the brain power of the viewer that Gauthier has. If there's any criticism I have against this mode of storytelling, it's that some of the cast look remarkably similar, and sometimes it was hard telling between the two redheads in bikinis, the two blonde-haired guys, and things like that. If you're going to have a large cast, give the viewer a break and make everyone look a little different from each other. Aquaslash does get killer light and relationship heavy in the middle, which makes the story sag a bit. In the third act, things spice up as there's a lot of anticipation for one big water slide competition between three sets of teams going down three slides. One of the slides have large knives placed inside to slice and dice the unsuspecting water parkers. While the lead up to this event is stretched out extraneously, the payoff is a good and gory one, full of body parts bobbing and blood red water. This is a short film, so I think that there could have been a little more meat to this movie sandwich in order for it to be more fulfilling, but once the aqua slashing does start, it really doesn't stop until the very end. I think my affinity towards Gauthier's style allowed me to forgive aqua slash for its shortcomings. I see the faults plain as day, but they didn't bother me as much because the filmmaker's style is so unique. Gauthier has delivered both a retro-typical slasher film, twist ending and all, and something that is unique to this style. Gauthier has only done two movies, Disco Path and now Aquaslash. Both slashers, both honoring periods of recent history, 70s with Disco Path and 80s with Aquaslash. I can't wait to see what he does for the 90s. While the filmmaker has a distinct style that might rub others the wrong way, I have to say I admire Gauthier's odd sense of storytelling and the uncanny tone to Aquaslash. That'll be it for today. Check back in tomorrow for my next pick on the countdown. Please chime in in the comments and let me know what you think of these films, how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own list. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button, share this video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews and information about countdown, including a list of all of my countdown picks, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. Don't forget, I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks out that you should look for. Grave Transfers is out right now in comic book stores. And Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, will be out in late November, early December, with diamond order code APR201712. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed to live the life you're
meant to be Stuck inside your reality Inside that we 